You bought yourself a brand new wireless doorbell like the Unify G4, Ring or even Nest and it doesn't come with a chime. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to use your HomePod mini and HomeKit to do this. There's a couple of products you'll need for this. Of course, the HomePod mini, some sort of machine like a Windows desktop, a Linux machine, even Mac OS, or in this video, I'm gonna be using a Raspberry Pi. If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you enjoy this video, remember to hit the like button and leave me a comment down below. Let's get to it. So first things first, we wanna make sure we install Homebridge. Now to do this, as I mentioned at the start, I'm gonna be using a Raspberry Pi. So it's really easy and simple to do this. You just pop your SD card into your computer and you go across and just looking on the screen, you choose the operating system, you go down to other specific OS purpose and Homebridge, it's right there. So you can click on that, choose your storage, which is the SD card I've just popped in and click right. It's then gonna ask you for a password, so we're gonna let that go off and do that. And just while that's doing that, and then we will come back once it's complete. And there we go, that's all done there, so we just click continue. I'm just gonna go pop the SD card in the Raspberry Pi, and then we should be able to boot it up. Just before I log into the home bridge itself, I just wanna show you their website. So as I mentioned earlier, that you're able to install it on all the different devices, so you can install it on Raspberry Pi, Linux machine, Mac OS, um, Docker or even Windows so you can choose whatever you want and there's a list of some of the plugins that they support down here so there's over 2,000 different home bridge plugins um, that support loads of different accessories so some of the ones that we have down here are Ring, Nest, TP-Link, Hue, uh, Belkin, MyQ and the one that we're looking at today is going to be Unified Protect. So you can have a look down here and search for something, whatever you want to be able to do. So I'm going to show you how this works. So you would actually type in the IP address of the Raspberry Pi. So I know mine's 10.1.1.178. Press enter. That, that's my mistake with the IP. It's actually 187. So we click continue. Just going to zoom this in a little bit to make it a little bit easier for you to view. To log in is quite simple. The username is admin and the password is admin. For the first time, I recommend you do change this password if you do set this up properly. Um, so you can go into here, user accounts, and you can edit. So admin, admin, you can type in a new password here, so I suggest you do that. And if you wanna set up two-factor authentication, again, probably another thing I would recommend you to do, you can do that as well. So if we go back to the front page, not going to go too much into all of this just to show you what's happening so we're going to jump straight in so we can go to plugins and we can see what's plug uh, what we have installed here and you can literally just go up the search here there is a homebridge config editor so if you actually want to type in the code itself um, but for the purposes of this tutorial i'm trying to keep it as simple as possible so we're all going to do it through the user interface so we're just going to search for unify in the plugins and you can see it comes up here so homebridge unify protect now, one thing I would probably say is make sure you look for something that's verified. So we click install, and then that's gonna go off and do its installation. So hopefully this shouldn't take too long. And there we go, it's now installed. So, and this is where it is really easy and simple to set up. So you go to Unify Protect, um, you would type in your control address, and so mine's 10111. Uh, the username, I know mine is HB. I know I've created a different user um, within the Unify system on how to do this. Um, I'll show you that shortly. And then the password, just type that in as well. Yep, it's not the most secure password, but it will do. So the next bit is the doorbell message. So if you wanna make any presets here to link to any automation, you can do. Then there's optional settings. So if you wanna give the controller a name or how often you want it to refresh. Um, MQTT settings, a bit out of scope for this one. So then we go into the plugin feature options. So for here, you want to type in enable.doorbell.trigger. So what this allows you to do is use this additional feature to do link to other automation stuff. So if you want when the doorbell is pressed a certain light pops on, you can do that as well. So then we just hit save. So once you've saved that, you then need to go off and restart your home bridge. Um, so you just click on that and it will go off and restart and then that's that bit done once it's restarted You'll see down here what it's connected with um, So the Unify protect if you if you get any errors to say not able to connect or username password incorrect You know that obviously you've not put the right IP address in or 
your username and password that you've created for this user is incorrect. But we can see it's discovered two cameras, so I've got my G3 Instant and my front door. So it's enabling the doorbell automation triggers and it's enabling the two messages that are already on there. So leave package at door and do not disturb. That's really all there is to configure on this side. So the next thing you're going to want to do, this little code above me here, is what you're going to need to scan inside Homebridge. So, so what I'm going to quickly do is load up my phone and show you what we need to do on this. So we go into the HomeKit app and you would start by going to the plus sign in the top right hand corner and going to add accessory. What you can do then is scan the QR code and there we go, you can see the bridge has appeared. So we click add to home. It says it's an uncertified accessory, but we're gonna click add anyway and it's just gonna go off and connect to the bridge. So there you go. So it's gonna tell you, it's gonna ask you where it is. So I'm just gonna put it in the office for now. We'll click continue. Um, we can just call it home bridge for now continue and there we go so it actually shows you straight away that you've got one of two cameras connected so you've got the front door you click continue um, again I'm just going to put it all in the office for now uh, front door and these are the triggers so remember the um, front doorbell trigger that we created um, that's on here the front door motion leave package at door and do not disturb so we click continue and now it's going to identify the other one so we click continue here again just pop it in the office for now um, this is the g3 instant and then we click continue and we click continue again so there we go those two cameras are now done so if i scroll down towards the bottom you can see both of these cameras here so now that that's done we have a look at the front door itself um, it's just facing down at the moment so it's just pointing towards the carpet but we click settings um, we would go, you can see you can change the room at a later point if you want to do so, the number of accessories included, so these are the different options you have. Um, you want to include it in your favorites, you can add automation to it, for which we'll come back to a second in a second. Uh, the main thing you want to look at though is the notifications. So automatically it chimes on the HomePod when uh, someone presses the doorbell. Uh, notify when the camera goes offline, so you'll get a notification on this phone when it does. That's already set for notification on this phone. If you want to limit the time you get it, so you can just say I want it during the day, during the night, during specific times, you can set that up. And when you want it to be done. So do you want it when I'm home, when I'm not at home, so you can use sort of some sort of geofencing if you wanted to. Now the motion notifications, we can enable that. So if there is any motion on it, we can have a notification pop up. For the motion notifications, this only does come through to your phone so you don't actually hear this on the HomePod Mini. You can always add yourself in an automation. So you click add automation. When a sensor detects something, so you wanna say something at the front door, at any time you click next, and you want it to go to the HomePod, and you want it to play some sort of audio. Now, the only thing slightly frustrating with this is when you go to choose audio, it says you need Apple Music subscription. So, slightly frustrating that you need that, but there may be other ways around it which you can so you could do something by converting it to a shortcut, but I haven't quite figured that out just yet. That's one thing that's slightly annoying, but if you do have Apple Music, um, you can get it to play some sort of audio when some motion is detected. So if you can get a file clip which says uh, motion detected or some sort of sound, you can get that to play. Something, like I said, is really frustrating on that side because I think it could be quite powerful that you could actually be alerted if there's some sort of notification, but you still get notified on your phone. And for the, the camera itself, you've got similar sort of settings, so you can go to notifications. Um, this isn't actually a doorbell, but it will chime on it if it was one. Um, and we can enable no, uh, motion notifications, so we can do that with the camera as well. So when there's motion, you get an alert on your phone. So just to show you the motion notification, I'm just going to show you how that works. There you go. So I've got two notifications just here, one on my front door. Um, from the home app which we enabled and also one from my unified protect itself so it's going to show me both of them the other good thing is you can see it shows you a, a very small image it is it is small but it shows you a very small image of what the motion is on there which is quite cool so let me quickly now show you what happens when you press the doorbell so if i quickly go off and do that so if i press the doorbell we can just do this and you can hear the HomePod ring. 
And as you can just see on here, um, at the bottom, it says there's someone that rang the doorbell, so you can see that also worked as well. I like this solution for a couple of reasons. One, it's really easy to set up, and two, you don't really need to run any additional wires. Let me know in the comments below if this is something you would set up, or you would opt for a different wireless doorbell option. For me, I have the HomePod Mini, so it was a really easy setup. The links to all the products in the video are in the description below. They are linked to my Amazon affiliate account, so if you do use them, they do help me out. For now, this is Inside Wire, and I'll see you in the next one.